John Scotus Ereugena or Johannes Scotus Ereugena, c. 815 c. 877 was an Irish theologian, Neoplatonist philosopher, and poet. He wrote a number of works, but is best known today for having written The Division of Nature, which has been called the final achievement of ancient philosophy, a work which synthesizes the philosophical accomplishments of fifteen centuries. Ereugena argued on behalf of something like a pantheistic definition of nature. He translated and made commentaries upon the work of Pseudo-Dionysus, and was one of the few Western European philosophers of his day that knew Greek, having studied in Athens. Famously, he is said to have been stabbed to death by his students at Malmesbury with their pens. Name the form, Ereugena, of his B name is used by John Scotus to describe himself in one manuscript. It means, Ireland Eriu born. Scotus, in the Middle Ages, was the Latin term for Irish or Gaelic, so his name translates as John, the Irish born Gael. Scotty was the name that the Romans called the Irish. The spelling, Scotus has the authority of the early manuscripts until perhaps the 11th century. Occasionally he is also named Scotagina, Irish born, in the manuscripts. He is not to be confused with the later philosopher John Dunn Scotus. Life Johannes Scotus Ereugena was an Irishman, educated in Ireland. He moved to France about 845 and took over the palace school at the invitation of Carolingian King Charles the Bald. He succeeded Alcuin of York 735 as head of the palace school. The reputation of this school, part of the Carolingian Renaissance, seems to have increased greatly under Ereugena's leadership, and the philosopher himself was treated with indulgence by the king. Whereas Alcuin was a schoolmaster rather than a philosopher, Ereugena was a noted Greek scholar, a skill which, though rare at that time in Western Europe, was used in the learning tradition of early and medieval Ireland, as evidenced by the use of Greek script in medieval Irish manuscripts. He remained in France for at least thirty years, and it was almost certainly during this period that he wrote his various works. The latter part of his life is unclear. There is a story that in 882 he was invited to Oxford by Alfred the Great, laboured there for many years, became abbot at Malmesbury, and was stabbed to death by his pupils with their styli. Whether this is to be taken literally or figuratively is not clear, and some scholars think it may refer to some other Johannes. He probably never left France, and the date of his death is generally given as 877. From the evidence available, it is impossible to determine whether he was a cleric or a layman. The general conditions of the time make it likely that he was a cleric and perhaps a monk. Topic: Works. Topic: His work is largely based upon Saint Augustine, Pseudo Dionysus, Maximus the Confessor, and the Cappadocian Fathers, and is clearly Neoplatonist. He revived the transcendentalist standpoint of Neoplatonism with its graded hierarchy approach. By going back to Plato, he revived the nominalist realist debate. The first of the works known to have been written by Ereugena during this period was a treatise on the Eucharist, which has not survived. In it, he seems to have advanced the doctrine that the Eucharist was merely symbolical or commemorative, an opinion for which Berengar of Tours was at a later date censured and condemned. As a part of his penance, Berengarius is said to have been compelled to burn publicly Ereugena's treatise. So far as we can learn, however, Ereugena was considered orthodox and a few years later was selected by Hinkmar, Archbishop of Reims, to defend the doctrine of liberty of will against the extreme predestinarianism of the monk Gotchik Many in the Church opposed Gotchik's position because it denied the inherent value of good works. The treatise De Divina Predestination composed for this occasion has been preserved, and it was probably from its content that Ereugena's orthodoxy became suspect. Ereugena argues the question of predestination entirely on speculative grounds, and starts with the bold affirmation that philosophy and religion are fundamentally one and the same. Even more significant is his handling of authority and reason. Ereugena offered a skilled proof that there can be predestination only to the good, for all folk are summoned to be saints. 
The work was warmly assailed by Drepanius Florus, canon of Lyons, and Prudentius, and was condemned by two councils, that of Valence in 855, and that of Langra in 859. By the former council his arguments were described as pultis scotorum, Irish porridge, and commentum diaboli, an invention of the devil. Ereugena believed that all people and all beings, including animals, reflect attributes of God, towards whom all are capable of progressing and to which all things ultimately must return. Ereugena was a believer in apocatastasis or universal reconciliation, which maintains that the universe will eventually be restored under God's dominion see also Christian universalism. <laughs> Translation of Pseudo-Dionysus Topic. At some point in the centuries before Ereugena a legend had developed that Saint Denis, the first bishop of Paris and patron saint of the important abbey of Saint Denis, was the same person as both the Dionysus the Areopagite mentioned in Acts 17.34, and Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite, a figure whose writings were not yet being circulated in the West in the 9th century it was not until the 16th century, except by Abelard, that it was realized that these two figures were not connected. Accordingly, in the 820s ambassadors from the Byzantine Emperor to the court of Louis the Pious donated Louis a Greek manuscript of the Dionysian corpus, which was immediately given to the Abbey of Saint Denis in the care of Abbot Hilduin. Hilduin proceeded to direct a translation of the Dionysian corpus from Greek into Latin, based on this single manuscript. Soon after, probably by the middle of the 9th century, Ereugena made a second Latin translation of the Dionysian corpus, and much later wrote a commentary on the celestial hierarchy. This constitutes the first major Latin reception of the Areopagite. It is unclear why Ereugena made a new translation so soon after Hilduin's. It has often been suggested that Hilduin's translation was deficient, though this is a possibility, it was a serviceable translation. Another possibility is that Ereugena creative energies and his inclination toward Greek theological subjects motivated him to make a new translation, Ereugena's next work was a Latin translation of Dionysus the Areopagite undertaken at the request of Charles the Bald. This also has been preserved, and fragments of a commentary by Ereugena on Dionysus have been discovered in manuscript, a translation of the Areopagite. S. writings was not likely to alter the opinion already formed as to Ereugena. S. Orthodoxy. Pope Nicholas I was offended that the work had not been submitted for approval before being given to the world, and ordered Charles to send Ereugena to Rome, or at least to dismiss him from his court. There is no evidence, however, that this order was carried out. At the request of the Byzantine Emperor Michael III, ca. 858, Ereugena undertook some translation into Latin of the works of Pseudo Dionysus and added his own commentary. With this translation, he was the first since St. Augustine to introduce the ideas of Neoplatonism from the Greek into the Western European intellectual tradition, where they were to have a strong influence on Christian theology. <laughs> Topic. Ereugena's great work, De Division Natura on the Division of Nature or Perifician, which was condemned by a council at Sens by Honorius III 1225, who described it as "...swarming with worms of heretical perversity," and by Gregory XIII in 1585, is arranged in five books. The form of exposition is that of dialogue, the method of reasoning is the syllogism. Nature natura in Latin or physis in Greek is the name of the most comprehensive of all unities, that which contains within itself the most primary division of all things, that which is being and that which is not non-being. The Latin title refers to these four divisions of nature, one, that which creates and is not created, two, that which is created and creates, three, that which is created and does not create, four, that which is neither created nor creates. The first is God as the ground or origin of all things, the last is God as the final end or goal of all things, that into which the world of created things ultimately returns. The second and third together compose the created universe, which is the manifestation of God, God in process, theophania, the second is the world of platonic ideas or forms, and the third is a more pantheistic world, or a pantheistic one, depending on the interference of God. Thus we distinguish in the divine system beginning, middle and end. These three are in essence one, the difference is only the consequence of our finite comprehension. 
We are compelled to envisage this eternal process under the form of time, to apply temporal distinctions to that which is extra or supratemporal. It is in turn through our experience that the incomprehensible divine is able to frame an understanding of itself. The division of nature has been called the final achievement of ancient philosophy, a work which synthesizes the philosophical accomplishments of fifteen centuries. It is presented, like Alkin's book, as a dialogue between master and pupil. Eriugena anticipates Thomas Aquinas, who said that one cannot know and believe a thing at the same time. Eriugena explains that reason is necessary to understand and interpret revelation. Authority is the source of knowledge, but the reason of mankind is the norm by which all authority is judged. Topic: <inaudible> Influence. Topic: Eriugena's work is distinguished by the freedom of his speculation and the boldness with which he works out his logical or dialectical system of the universe. He marks, indeed, a stage of transition from the older Platonizing philosophy to the later scholasticism. For him philosophy is not in the service of theology. The above quoted assertion as to the substantial identity between philosophy and religion is repeated almost word for word by many of the later scholastic writers, but its significance depends upon the selection of one or other term of the identity as fundamental or primary. For Eriugena, philosophy or reason is first, primitive, authority or religion is secondary, derived. His influence was greater with mystics than with logicians, but he was responsible for a revival of philosophical thought which had remained largely dormant in Western Europe after the death of Boethius. After Eriugena another medieval thinker of significance was Berengar of Tours, professor at the monastic school in the French city. Berengar believed that truth is obtained through reason rather than revelation. Saint Peter Damien agreed with Tertullian that it is not necessary for people to philosophize because God has spoken for them. Damien was prior of Fonti Avellana and afterward Cardinal Bishop of Ostia. He died in 1072. Lanfranc was prior of Beck in Normandy. Like Damien he believed mostly in faith, but admitted the importance of reason. Saint Anselm was a pupil and successor of Saint Peter Damien. On the whole, one might be surprised that even in the 17th century pantheism did not gain a complete victory over theism, for the most original, finest, and most thorough European expositions of it none of them, of course, will bear comparison with the Upanishads of the Vedas all came to light at that period, namely through Bruno, Malbranche, Spinoza, and Scotus Erigena. After Scotus Erigena had been lost and forgotten for many centuries, he was again discovered at Oxford and in 1681, thus four years after Spinoza death, his work first saw the light in print. This seems to prove that the insight of individuals cannot make itself felt so long as the spirit of the age is not ripe to receive it. On the other hand, in our day 1851 pantheism, although presented only in Schelling's eclectic and confused revival thereof, has become the dominant mode of thought of scholars and even of educated people. This is because Kant had preceded it with his overthrow of theistic dogmatism and had cleared the way for it, whereby the spirit of the age was ready for it, just as a ploughed field is ready for the seed. Leszek Kolakowski, a Polish Marx scholar, has mentioned Eriugena as one of the primary influences on Hegel's, and therefore Marx's, dialectical form. In particular, he called De Division Natura a prototype of Hegel's phenomenology of spirit. Topic. Joke Topic. William of Malmesbury's humorous anecdote illustrates both the character of Eriugena and the position he occupied at the French court. The king having asked, quid de stat inter sotum et scotum, what separates a sot drunkard from an Irishman, Eriugena replied, tabula tantum only a table, William of Malmesbury is not considered a reliable source on John Scotus Eriugena by modern scholars. For example, his reports that Eriugena is buried at Malmesbury is doubted by scholars who say that William confused John Eriugena with a different monk named John. William's report on the manner of Eriugena's death, killed by the pens of his students, also appears to be a legend. It seems certain that this is due to confusion with another John and that the manner of John's death is borrowed from the Acts of St. Cassian of Imola. Feast, at Malmesbury, 28 January, Topic. Legacy topic. 
He gives his name to the John Scottis School in Dublin. John Scottis also appeared on the series B5 Pounds Note, in use between 1976 and 1992. Works Translations Johannes Scotti Eriugene Perificien, De Division Natura, 3 vols, edited by I. P. Sheldon Williams, Dublin, Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, 1968–1981 The Latin and English text of books 1–3 of De Division Natura Perificien The Division of Nature, T.R. I. P. Sheldon Williams and J. J. O'Meara, Montreal, Bellarmine, 1987 The Latin text is published in A. Jono, ed. CCCM 161-165 The Voice of the Eagle. The Heart of Celtic Christianity, John Scotus Eriugena's homily on the prologue to the Gospel of St. John, translated and introduced by Christopher Bamford, Hudson, N.Y., Lindisfarne, Edinburgh, Floris, 1990 reprinted Great Barrington, M.A., Lindisfarne, 2000 translation of Homilia in Prologum Sancti Evangelii Secundum Joannum Iohannis Scotti Eriugene Perificien De Division Natura, edited by Eduard A. Jono, translated into English by John J. O'Meara and I.P. Sheldon Williams, Dublin, School of Celtic Studies, Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies, 1995 The Latin and English text of Book 4 of De Division Natura Glossi Divina Historiae, The Biblical Glosses of John Scotus Eriugena, edited by John J. Contreni and Padraig P. O'Neill, Firenze, Sismel Edizioni del Galuzzo, 1997 Treatise on Divine Predestination, translated by Mary Brennan, Notre Dame, in, University of Notre Dame Press, 1998 Translation of De Divina Predestination Liber. A 13th-century textbook of mystical theology at the University of Paris, The Mystical Theology of Dionysus the Areopagite in Ereugena S. Latin translation, with the Scholia translated by Anastasius the Librarian, and excerpts from Ereugena. S. Perificien, translated and introduced by L. Michael Harrington, Dallas Medieval Texts and Translations 4, Paris, Dudley, M. A., Peters, 2004 Paul Roram, Eriugena's Commentary on the Dionysian Celestial Hierarchy, Toronto, Pontifical Institute of Mediaeval Studies, 2005 the Latin text is published in Expositions in Hierarchium Coelestum Iohannis Scoti Eriugene, Ed. J. Barbet, CCCM 31, 1975 See also Apocatastasis Berengarians Christian Universalism Eucharistic Theology Mystical theology Neoplatonism and Christianity References Sources this article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Erigena, Johannes Scotus. Encyclopædia Britannica. 9 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 742-744. <laughs> Further reading Jono, Edouard Jean Scott Erigene et le Grec. Bulletin du Conge, Archivum Latinitatis Medi Aevi, Leiden, E. J. Brill, M. C. M. L. X. X. V. I. I. 3. Tome X. L. I. This argues that Eriugena's knowledge of Greek was not completely thorough. Paul Roram. The Early Latin Dionysus, Eriugena and Hugh of St. Victor. Modern Theology 24-4, 2008. John McInnes. The Harmony of All Things. Music, Soul, and Cosmos in the Writings of John Scotus Eriugena, Ph.D. Dis, Florida State University, 2014. Topic. External links Topic. 
Moran, Dermot, John Scotus Eriugena, in Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Works by John Scotus Eriugena at Open Library Eriugena, Dialectic and Ontology in the Periphysian, Ontology. Complete list of the editions and translations of the works of Eriugena, Ontology. A.J. Bibliography on Eriugena's Philosophical Work, Ontology. K.Z. Bibliography on Eriugena's Philosophical Work, Ontology. Opera Omnia by Migni Petrologia Latina with Analytical Indexes, EU, Documenta Catholica Omnia. John Chapter 31 at Prosopography of Anglo-Saxon England John Scotus and John the Sophist, Elfenspell.